So let's consider an example based on system of coplanar concurrent forces. So this is the system of forces we have got. If you see here, so here we got a force of 15 kilonewton, which makes an angle of 15 degree with x-axis. A force of 105 kilonewton, which is acting in the positive direction of y-axis. And we got a force of 75 kilonewton, which is acting in the negative direction of x-axis. A force of 45 kilonewton, which makes 35 degree with the negative direction of y-axis. And a force of 60 kilonewton, which makes an angle of 40 degree with the positive direction of x-axis. So we have to find the resultant of this particular system of forces, which is a system of coplanar concurrent forces. Because all these forces are in same plane and they are passing through the same common point. Okay. So let's start with this. So first of all, we'll make a table. So we list down all the forces F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 and then their X and Y components over here. Okay. Let me call this force as F1, this force as F2, this one as F3, this one as F4 and this one as F5. So we have got five forces and let me write down their value. So F1 is 15 kN, so it is here I am writing 15 kN. This is 15 kN. F2 if you see here, F2 is 105 kN. So I will write down here. 105 F3 75 kilonewton and the last one which is F5 we have taken this 60 kilonewton as F5 so I am going to call this as F5 60 kilonewton so we have listed down all the forces here now we will try to find out their components X and Y components so now first of all we will find the component X and Y component of this force which is F1 so for x component, we'll draw a line parallel to x direction. So this is like this. This is going to be the x component of this and a vertical line like this will be the y component. So we have got x and y component of this particular force you can see here. Okay. So this is x component, this is y component. So here it is acting in the positive direction of y axis. So it has only y component. This one is acting towards negative direction of x axis. So it has only x component. There is no y component in this. Okay. Now here also we can draw a line parallel to x axis. And a line parallel to y axis like this. So this is going to be. So we are able to resolve this particular force. 45 kilonewton force along y direction and x direction. And similarly for this also, so we have resolved along x direction, this is the x component and along y direction. So let's write down their x and y component. So since this force is 15 kN, you can see here, and this angle is 15 degree, so this x component will be 15 cos 15, okay, and this will be y component, so since this is 15 and this angle is 15, it will be sine, so y component will be 15 sine 15 degree. We are able to find the x component and y component of this particular force which is 15 kN. Similarly, this angle is 40 degree, so this will also be 40 degree, this angle will be 40 degree here. So we can resolve 60 kN along x direction as 60 and the angle is 40, so cos 40 degree and y component will be 60 sin 60 degree. So we are able to resolve this force 60 kN along x direction as well as y direction. Now here also 45 degree also 45 kN force also we can resolve. Since this angle is 35 degree this will also be 35 degree. So this will be because it is making an angle. So this particular component is making 35 degree. So it will be 45 and then cos 35 this particular component which is the y component and x component will be this is 45 so it is 45 and then angle is 35 so it is sine 35 so we have resolved uh, the forces along x and y direction here now this force is acting in the y direction so there is no x component so it has only y component and this 
so this force is acting in the negative direction of x-axis so it has only x component there is no y component to it so let me list down all these components so f1 if you see here f1 x component is 15 cos 15 it is acting towards right so right is positive so we take plus 15 cos 15 degree okay now y component here so y component is 15 sin 15 and, and it is acting towards positive direction of x axis so it will be positive and the value will be 15 sin 15 okay so we have finished the force f1 the force f2 is acting towards positive direction of y axis there won't be any x component so x component is not there it has only y component and that is positive because it is acting towards positive direction of y axis so it is 105 kilonewton so it is 105 here you can see force f3 is acting towards negative direction of x axis so it has no y component so there is no y component to it and it has only x component and that is also negative because negative direction of x axis so it has minus 75 kilonewton okay now force f4 it has x component which is 45 sin 50 45 sin 35 and it is acting towards left that is negative direction so minus 45 sin 35 and its y component is acting downward so it is negative again 45 cos 35 and the last one is 60 kn which is f5 so its x component is 60 cos 40 and it is acting towards positive direction of the x axis so it is positive so 60 cos 40 and y component is acting downward direction so it is going to be negative so, so minus 60 sin 40 degree okay so we have listed down all the forces here and their x component and y component now we will have to find the sum of all these x components and y components so if you add all these values that is called as summation of f of x and after calculation summation of f of x will be minus 40.36 similarly if you add all these values it will be summation of fy if you calculate this value you will get this value as so this value you will be getting as 33.45 33.45 so we got the value of summation of f of x is minus 40.36 and the summation of fy which is addition of these values will be 33.45 okay so the next is we have to find the magnitude of resultant so the magnitude of resultant force is given by r so r is given as square root of summation of f of x square plus summation of f of y square so we have to find out this value that is square root of minus 40.36 square plus 33.45 square. So if you solve this, the value of resultant you will be getting as 52.42 kilonewton. So this is the magnitude of resultant. Now we also need to find out the direction of resultant direction of resultant force so to find the direction of resultant force, you have to take theta which is tan inverse of summation of fy by summation of fx if you substitute in this the value of summation of fy and summation of fx and you calculate the value of theta angle theta you will be getting as minus 39.65 degrees if you follow the procedure like this you can easily find out the resultant of given system of coplanar concurrent forces so the procedure is very simple you first list down all the forces, calculate their corresponding x components and their y components and then calculate the summation of all the x component and summation of all the y components. So by using the expression for magnitude of resultant force, you can find out the magnitude r s square root of summation of f x square 
plus summation of f y square. So here we got the values summation of f x as minus forty point three six. We have put here. So we have substituted that value over here. Similarly, we got summation of f y thirty three point four five that we have substituted here. We got the value of the magnitude of resultant force is fifty two point four two kilonewton. And if you want to find direction of resultant force. That is given by angle theta, which is tan inverse of summation of f y divided by summation of f x. So, if I substitute these two values here correspondingly, I'll get angle theta as minus thirty nine point six five degree.